by fans of high quality entertainment. Today's video, as you can read, if you can read, is my most played albums of all time. Now, uh, Norman Maslov did a video recently, 10 records I listened to the most, and someone named Glenn Calleway from the basement also did a video and, and, and a few others. Uh, and I did a video recently, my most 10 played albums of the past year or so. But this is for all time. And it took a, a quite a bit of thinking. You know, I'm not going <laughs> to, you know, you don't count how many times you, you listen to an album. So obviously you're just kind of guessing, especially when you're 65 years old. And you've been playing music for the past 60 years at least. But I think I did pretty good at guessing. And also I'm I'm just including one artist for for each one. Otherwise it would probably be mostly Beatles albums. And I almost included uh Paul McCartney's Ram. But there were, you know, quite a few years, as some of you know, where I didn't listen to Paul McCartney very much. So, I don't know. But I have played Ram, you know, a lot of other Paul McCartney albums quite a lot. But here we go. And also, after I show you the... Actually, it, it's not 10, it's 11. It's 10 plus a bonus one. And then I'm ranking all of the albums at the end of this. How exciting. Here we go. So number 11. Oh. Yep. Uh, Frank Zappa with Captain Beefheart, a live album called Bongo Fury from 1975. When I first... I, that was the year I, I got into Frank Zappa with uh, One Size Fits All. It was the first year I'd always heard of him, but I'd never heard his music. And I was lucky enough to, <laughs> for the first album to buy One Size Fits All, which is one of his greatest albums. And then I might have bought one or two other ones, and then Bongo Fury. But the first time I heard this, because I had not heard of Captain Beefheart before, I was I didn't like it. So it took me, you know, a few spins to appreciate, but it's definitely one of my all-time favorite live albums. So that's number 11. Number 10 is Steppenwolf. Yeah, At Your Birthday Party from 1968. Uh, my brother, my oldest brother Bob had this in his collection, and he was the one of the two brothers who... I was allowed to play his, his albums. My other brother, Don, I couldn't even look at his albums. <laughs> so yeah, that's when it started, my, my love for this album. And I'll, I have the Steppenwolf box set. I think they're a very underrated album band. Uh, so yeah, it, this is my favorite. Not my, no, not my favorite Steppenwolf album, but it's the one I, I've played the most. Yeah. Number nine, Credence Clearwater Revival, Bio Country. I listened to this again last night. It's one of the first albums that I owned, you know, that was mine. And uh, yeah, so I've always been a big fan of Credence ever since hearing this album. And Keep On Chuglin, one of my all-time favorite songs. And uh, I would say, yeah, even last night, the one song I'm not crazy about is Graveyard Train. It kind of plods along. I like it more than I did in the past. I used to dislike it, and now I don't mind it, but it's not one of my favorites. But that being said, I never skip it. I always show respect to albums, and even if there's a song I don't care for, I listen to it. Number eight is Lou Reed, 
Glenn Kellaway from The Basement's favorite artist. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have his whole discography once again. This was the very first album of his I heard back in 1976. I, I, I loved it right away. He's not a great singer, of course, but just, and there's something about this particular album that I've just played more than any, any of his other albums, even though there's others I love just as much like uh, Berlin and uh, The Belts. But yeah. It makes, I don't know, it makes me happy. <laughs> I'm just a gift to the women of this world. <laughs> Number seven. Yeah. So, so most of these albums are from the late, or from the late 60s, early 70s. Because, you know, you, you played them more than ones from later on. But this one... Uh, I think I first heard, I don't know when, maybe 20 years ago or so. I, oh, I guess when it came out, whatever year that was, I have played it a lot along with Doc at Radar Station. It's my favorite Captain Beefheart album, but it's number one for me. And yeah, I play this a lot. So I think it's, even though, you know, it's, I didn't listen to it when I was younger. The past few years, I play it a lot, so I think it's probably at number seven for sure. We're close to it. <laughs> number six. Blue Oyster Cult. I almost picked Secret Treaties because that was the first Blue Oyster Cult album I ever bought and heard in 1975. And then I got Tyranny and Mutation, which I loved, and their debut, Blue Easter Cult. But I think through the years, since 1975, I've played this the most out of any Blue Easter Cult album. And uh, I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's close to my favorite, if it isn't. I think, I think Secret Treaties would probably be number one. But I love this album. Number five. Yeah, I've talked about this album a lot, Blind Faith. Uh, so I, I got it the year it came out. I'd, I don't know if it was like a Christmas present or maybe one of my brothers bought it for me for Christmas. I'd heard of the, you know, I'd heard of Eric Clapton and maybe Steve Winwood, but I didn't know the music. So I didn't like, you know, I thought it was okay at first, but through the years... <laughs> It's one of my all-time favorite albums, and even in the past year, I've, I've played it a lot, so it's number five. I'm still waiting for the uh, second album. Number four. Yeah. Led Zeppelin. I think Led Zeppelin II was the first one I ever heard. I think one of my brothers bought it and then Led Zeppelin. But I think overall, even though my favorite Led Zeppelin album is Physical Graffiti, I think their debut is the one I've played the most through the years. I never get tired of it. I've played it hundreds of times. One of my all-time favorite albums, along with Physical Graffiti and, you know, Led Zeppelin 2 and 3 and 4. And just one of the greats. Number three. Yeah. Yeah. Once it, probably the first album I bought with my own own money because I had a paper route back in the day in 1970. And yeah, I just I have played that album so many times through the years. I just played it again last night. And I had the honor of interviewing Mark Farner, as some of you know, on my on my Canadian Stuff Muffin channel about three or four months ago. And uh, yeah, just the raw energy. That's so good. Now, number two is, I know it's going to be a, a shock to some of you. It, 
It's Sparks, Kimono My House. I play, you know, their earlier albums. I played Indiscreet a heck of a lot and Propaganda. A Woofer and Tweeter's Clothing. But I would say, overall, I've probably played this the most through the years. And most of you know the story. Uh, I saw them on the Midnight Special in 1974. And then I never saw the footage for... 49 years but the midnight special has a youtube channel and without the the audio they've posted all four performances so this was 49 years ago the first time i saw sparks and i was kind of in shock uh, not just visually but with the music and the vocals and everything uh i didn't know what to make of it all i was Probably confused. <laughs> I still am today. <laughs> and so the next day I ran out and I bought Kimono My House. And uh, I threw it in the garbage. Yes. But luckily I took it out of the garbage later in the day. And I've been a fan ever since. So that's number two. And number one. Of course, it would have to be a Beatles, you know, and plus there's a lot of other bands and artists, John Lennon, and David Bowie, lots of albums I've played many, many times, but uh, these are the top 11. And for the Beatles, I don't know. I'm just guessing, but I almost picked Abbey Road because I played that a heck of a lot, or even the White Elf. But I've gone with Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band because I was playing that in 1967, right? So, uh, yeah. It's my number one most played album. I still never get tired of listening to it. So ranking these in order quickly. Here we go. So my... My least favorite to my favorite of the most played albums, but I still, like I said, love all of these albums. So number 11 would be At Your Birthday Party. Then uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival, Bio Country. Blind Faith, number nine. Bongo Fury, number eight. Uh, number seven, Grand Funk Live album. Number six, Coney Island Baby. Number five, Blue Oyster Cult. Number four, Led Zeppelin. Number three, Shiny Beast. Uh, yeah, I and I like I said, I play this so much in the past few years. It's number three. Number two, Kimono My House. And number one, of course. You know, through the years, what's your favorite Beatles album? It's been the White Album, and it's been Abbey Road, and maybe a little bit of Sgt. Pepper. But in the last year or so, I've kind of decided it is, it is Sgt. Pepper. Because it was so groundbreaking. And I'll leave that for maybe some other video, but yeah, Sergeant Pepper. So I would love your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you want to do a response video, that'd be cool. Just let me know. Uh, don't leave the link for your video because it might come off as spam, but let me know if you do a video with your, the most rec the records you've listened to the most in your life, and I will check out your video. So thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.